You know when sometimes a game just feels right? When the setting, the characters, the gameplay all just come together for a great experience. That's what I get from Rise of the Ronin, and it seems like Team Ninja may have hit on something special here. It definitely does share ideas with plenty of other games, but it's done in a way that picks the right things and ends up with a good blend that simply works. The same is perhaps echoed in the story to some extent. It leans on certain historical events, but isn't afraid to take liberties and blend them into a new vision. The portrayal of the Japanese Bakumatsu period is one that merges tradition with modern as Eastern and Western cultures collide, and I'm loving it. This is a place of many pleasures. Enjoy, and leave the real world behind. Officially, this is a combat-focused, open-world action RPG. One with deep skill trees, multiple fighting styles, and an array of bladed weapons and period firearms to suit many different playstyles. The game delivers on all counts with an excellent combat system and tons of things to do as you roam the open countryside and urban areas. Not least among these is photography, which actually plays a fairly significant part in the game. That's wonderful to hear. After acquiring a prototype camera from an eccentric inventor, make sure you use it. You hear? You can expect to get lots of requests from people to take shots of certain things and places. It's a fun addition, but that's not the only creative camera in Rise of the Ronin. Come to the garden now. When a studio shows a clear love for photography, as Team Ninja surely does, it should come as no surprise to see an impressive photo mode. And impressive is the right word too, as the first look through the features reveal highlights like a much coveted 3 point lighting system, character gaze direction, and the ability to advance the in game animation frame by frame. It's a fantastic recipe, though much like Izuka san's inventing ideas, there are some improvements to be made. Camera movement, for example, takes the somewhat odd approach of using the L2 and R2 triggers to move forwards and backwards while the left stick moves it up, down, left and right. It is at least a free camera with an OK range and full 180 degree roll, but why fly in the face of convention, especially when it doesn't match the in-game controls either? Depth of field is also a little unconventional and works by setting where the in-focus region should be and then how close to that the foreground and background blur should begin. That means that there's no real way to adjust the amount of blur, just where it appears and the in-focus range doesn't go far enough to reach more distant objects. There's also a very abrupt edge transition between the focus and the blur, and it all makes it quite difficult to produce an authentic effect. On the same UI tab, there are a pair of exposure and brightness controls to brighten and darken the image. The latter is more biased towards the shadows, while the former works towards the highlights, so they can also be combined to tweak the contrast too. Just beware that some of these settings can have an unwanted effect on the colour saturation, and there's no separate option to control that like there was in Neo 2 by the way. There is a little workaround for this actually, as one of the filters, called Black Point, can also be used to correct the contrast, and works nicely in combination with the exposure and brightness settings. The catch here of course, is that this prevents you from using any of the other filters, and that is a shame because there's some really creative options in there. The colour silhouette is a particular standout, and there's some extreme aberration effects, as well as simpler tonal adjustments and imperfections. It was probably a mistake to bundle all of these together really, because if you choose to add, say, a vignette, it rules out the use of any of the other stylistic options. On other creative notes, the photo mode has a bunch of quite nice frames, as well as a selection of stickers and logos. Up to 20 of these can be applied to each image and some designs can be used as a kind of mosaic to cover a larger area if you like. I'd love to see these being able to go behind the characters, but for now they're just a simple overlay effect. Moving on to the character options then, there are various visibility toggles for the player, the allies and the enemies, and for things like weapons, headgear and blood effects, but that's not all. Facial expressions can also be changed for the player character, as well as for any current allies, albeit quite subtly. And as a final tweak, these are accompanied by horizontal and vertical gaze direction sliders, letting you get just the right line of sight. The amount of adjustment is probably not enough to be noticeable at distance, 
but it is something that can make all the difference in close-up shots and portraits. Something the characters don't benefit from here are poses, and I don't really see this as a problem though. Partly because preset poses often get very samey when you see them repeated in lots of shots, but mainly because of the frame by frame animation. Pressing or holding triangle will advance through the game animation, including environmental movement, combat moves, or just idle stances. This is a superb feature every time it makes it into a photo mode, the sort of thing that every single one should include. It's great to have when trying to catch the perfect moment, or just to get a more natural and candid pose. As usual though, just don't go too far forwards because there is no reverse. Before we get onto that all important lighting setup, it's worth taking a quick look at the final tab of the photo mode UI. The first thing on there is a toggle for a shortcut button that had been missing up until now. It is quite a poor choice though of R1 plus options, but it can save a long trek through the menus. You'll also find settings to invert every camera input and to change its movement speed. I recommend whacking these straight down to zero for more precise composition. And don't forget that there is a thirds grid there to help with that too. Speaking of help, I very much appreciate the save setting feature, which will store your current photo mode settings apart from the camera and then reapply them next time you open it. This is perfect for shooting a series of the same style or just for setting up a preferred baseline to work from. Any custom lighting setup is always something that elevates a photo mode to the next level, and Rise of the Ronin has some powerful options. Three separate lights can be toggled on and off, and each one includes a wide intensity range for subtle or overpowering light and full RGB colour control. This is great of course, but does it really need to take so long? Placing lights around the scene is very easy thanks to the little sun icon that shows where the light source is and can be moved freely around without colliding with any objects. Lights move around the screen with the left stick while the triggers push them further away or closer to you. This is actually the exact same control scheme as the photo mode camera, only here it seems to make much more sense. Once placed, each light will also remember its position and settings if you turn it off and back on again. It's all just a nice and friendly workflow for lighting a subject, although there are a couple of things to be aware of. Firstly, each light is omnidirectional and cannot be aimed like a spotlight, so they will illuminate all nearby surfaces. This can be a problem when trying to light characters in a tight space, and it becomes extremely difficult to simulate directional lighting. The lights also don't seem to cast shadows from the objects that they shine on. At best this means that you can't deliberately create a shadow as a feature, but the light will also shine straight through some things that it really shouldn't, causing some very unnatural effects as a result. On the plus side, that does mean that lights can be hidden behind a wall and still take effect on the subject, a potential workaround for that lack of direction then. They say a photograph shows things precisely as they are. Well, When you've got a well-featured photo mode, it pays to have some good subject matter to use it with, and 19th century Japan certainly doesn't disappoint. Now we have all the tools we need. The map feels expansive and varied as it effortlessly transitions from urban area to rolling hillsides while still managing to be surprisingly compact. Getting around is easy as you run, ride or glide from one objective to the next, and there is even a rapid fast travel network to make revisiting ideal spots as easy as can be. Time of day will also progress while you're out and about, and although there's no precise control over that, you can skip on to morning, noon or night as a starting point using a pocket watch. Once out in the open world, there's almost no end to the combat opportunities, with many natural encounters and staged face-offs giving the chance to capture some action. The elegance of Japanese swordsmanship is complemented by imported weapons and firearms, and even some more experimental things that add a bit more excitement. That elegance is often shared by the characters too, 
with many traditional and formal outfits on show. A lot of these will come your way as loot, way more than I expected actually, though that should probably not be a surprise given the frankly ridiculous amount of options found in the character creator. If there is a disappointment, it has to be that the visual fidelity is not as impressive as may have been hoped. Characters can look good up close, but the level of detail quickly drops away at greater distance, even when using the prioritised graphics or ray tracing modes. That's not to say that you can't get good looking and interesting shots from this game, you absolutely can. The photo mode goes some way to help there with advanced options, which may be reason enough to use it for some people, but Ronin exists in a world that will make you want to either way. Or maybe you can just have a bit of fun watching the live action while in co-op. Rise of the Ronin is a joy to play and Team Ninja have once again shown their affinity for photography with an excellent photo mod to go along with it. I'm glad to see you like my camera. A few slight oddities do mean that some aspects perhaps don't quite live up to their promise on paper, though headline features like custom lighting and frame animation mean that photographing a wandering samurai can be as rewarding as playing the role of one. Long story short, this camera is marvellously practical, and I have a feeling you will put my devices to good use. 